how do you determine who's going to be on your team and who's not? How do you determine what the intentions are? Talk about, talk about that. Well, I mean, you can almost never really know what people's intentions are. Yeah. That's, it, at some point, you have to throw caution to the yeah. wind and actually trust people, right? But typically, you don't want to hire people that don't come highly verified, right? You know, you don't want to bring people on your team that nobody can tell you did a good job, has done a good job, is currently doing a good job. And you, and you have to be very careful because even people that come in into a business with the right, with the right intentions, the proximity to money, power, and success can in real time corrupt people. So you can bring very honest, hardworking Christian people into this world, but they end up becoming engulfed in that world and that world becomes so enticing to them um, and them wanting to have proximity to that at all times, even if you aren't involved, will sometimes cause people to try to find ways to manipulate situations to keep them involved in things longer than they actually should really even be involved. Because typically, at some point, someone on your team will not have grown at the same speed and level that you have. And unfortunately, they can't continue to maintain that position because they weren't doing what they needed to do to learn more about the position, to become more entrenched in the position, to make the best connections with other people in those positions to help further the group's advancements. And so when someone isn't, isn't really picking up the slack like everybody else is, no matter if you love these people with all your heart, you have to do what's right for you and your yeah. family yeah. and the time. Now that doesn't mean we can't be friends and that doesn't mean you can't go do the work and come back to the team. But right now this team's more this team needs more than you're willing to devote yourself to or devote time to learn about. So I got to go get somebody that can do this for us right now. Yeah. Maybe you can work with that person, learn from that person, and then we can bring you back into position. But right now, you can't carry the load, and the load has to be carried. Yeah. You know, one of the interesting things you said I never thought about, you said that you may have the right person, but then they're exposed to some things that they've never been exposed to, and it corrupts them. There were things that I had never seen before until I became an entertainer and got into this business. And these things will, will blow your mind. You'll see some, you know, if you never, if you never really, if you're a man and you never really had, you know, a lot of women fawning yeah. over you and women wasn't, you wasn't the captain of the football team and you wasn't the center on the basketball team and none of this stuff, but you wasn't, like women, you wasn't cute, you wasn't fine and nothing like that. <laughs> and then you become famous and none of those things matter. You don't have to be cute if you're famous. You don't have to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. If you're famous, you have access to a world that most people don't get to see. And all of a sudden you start becoming the center of everybody's attention. That can go to your head if you're not mentally yeah. prepared with that. And that's just attention. We're not even talking about how bad money and yeah. power can corrupt people. You know, being a decision maker, being able to push a button and decide if somebody gets to work that night or not. If somebody gets to be exposed to 10,000, 12,000 people that night or not, that can be intoxicating yeah. as well. So has there been a situation where family member, someone you close to, you felt like they may actually have the skill to help you on a team, but you say the relationship is too valuable to take the risk that they may be corrupted by this. So I'm just going to go with someone else. Yeah, my, I tried to, my older brother um, came home from prison and of course he was pretty yoked up, you know, and I was like, look, let's, let's put you on security, you know. And uh, we could tell by the first show, he, he was not supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> you're not supposed to be with us. Yeah. <laughs> he had never seen the kind of money I was picking up that night. He had not seen the kind of women, not only that were in the club, but the kind that was telling him, hey, come here. Can you get me backstage? <laughs> and, and, and it just, you could look in his eyes and realize that world was just too much for him. It yeah. was, and he had just came home too, so. <laughs> He was seeing way too much, way too soon, and we had to send him back home. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just gave him a couple of times, saying, yeah. "Look, we just you ain't ready for this right now." So, so what was that conversation like? And and did it did it hinder the relationship at all? No, no, not at all. I was like, Robert, you ain't ready for this. He said, "Man, I did not know y'all was doing all this." I say, "This is Lake Charles. Yeah, this ain't even." I say, "If I take you to Atlanta, bro, you may yeah. never come back. Yeah, this yeah, ain't yeah. nothing." Yeah, yeah, yeah.